Dun, da, da, da. Welcome to Super Seller Sunday. Uh, today we are being joined by Nate. Makes stuff. I have no idea what your last name is, Nate. But we're so happy to see you. I actually like a lot of the stuff that you post in our group. You have a lot of really great things to say. You always have a positive attitude. And then after having a conversation with you, I said, yeah, I want you on our show. So welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of how you got started and what you do. So if you see me looking down, it's because I wrote, I wrote a few notes here. Really, uh, I started, I've been here just a little over a year now. I started, let's see, my background is in... Um, hard residential trades, building trades. Um, I started out as a painter, you know, that's seasonal work. So a lot of times in the winter, I'm just kind of sitting around doing nothing. So I, even more so during COVID, when COVID struck, I mean, sitting around not working much. Um, I turned to retail and I was doing that for a while. Retail in the climate that we're in isn't easy. I was looking for other ways to make money and I first started doing woodcrafts. So the very first thing I built was a bench for my family. And um, people would come over and they were really enthused about it. And they're like, man, that is really great. You do really good work. Build me one. So I started building stuff for friends and family, then neighbors. Then lumber prices started to increase. So that kind of took a hit. And I was trying to find something else to do. And, you know, when you're looking around, you see stuff that's kind of related to things that you're doing. I was looking at what other people were making. I was thinking, man, that's really neat. I'd like to do something like that. So I went, I found out how people were doing it and I bought myself my cricket and I started doing cricket crafting. I started doing, thinking I was going to make stickers and do like decals and make all this money. That really didn't work out too well either. I mean, I sold some, but really the amount of $5 decals you have to make to make a real living isn't a lot. I mean, I mean, it's a lot. So so I didn't really want to work that hard. I wanted to find something else that would make more money. So I bought myself a sandblaster and started sandblasting things. Oh, and wow. Yeah, the Cricut helps with the sandblasting because I can cut all my stencils and it's all kind of a byproduct of each other. So right. keep adapting and changing and um, finding new ways to make money and stand out in a crowd that's really thick right now. Right, right. That's awesome. In fact, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I always end up say, I'm interviewing other people and I end up talking about me too. Growing up, I was into woodworking and I used to make stuff all the time. And so sandblasting is, is fun. I like uh, the idea of decals and stickers. And I know there's a lot of people in that space, but wow, sandblasting sounds like a, a fun project. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally fun, and it allows me to, to stand out in a market that's super flush with people right now, because not everybody can go out and just buy the stuff to, to, to make that startup. I, and I do the stickers and stuff, too, but um, really, that's my go-to. That's kind of where I've gravitated, and, I, and so far, I've had a lot of success with that. You found a niche of a product that not a lot of people are doing right now. Yeah, not that I can find. There's a there's a higher demand for what I'm doing versus the other stuff that not so much. You know, it is that old adage of supply and demand. You got to find the product that people are looking for and willing to pay for. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there you see that's marketed, that's that's out there, and people are like, oh wow, you know, and they they assume that just because it's listed and just because it's posted, it's it's selling. And I don't know if that's always the case. You're right. That's true. In fact, there's plenty of things that I list that don't ever sell that I have to scrap or move on to the next thing, really reduce and get rid of and say, well, lesson learned on that one. The cost of the product is what was my lesson. And and really find those things that are being underserved in the market. When we're selling things that everybody's doing, we're competing with all those extra people. But when you're doing something like what you're talking about, sandblasting, it's probably not a market that that has a lot of of people in it, but there's still a market to purchase. There is, yeah, and there's there's you know there's stuff for everybody. There's there's small things that you know every day you know everybody can buy. There's some stuff that's marketed to people that not everybody can afford, and that and that's fine. I like to try to do a wide a wide range of things, but I realize that what I'm selling needs to match where I'm selling it at, if that makes sense. So, um, for instance, 
I saw somebody selling something, I think it was a lamp for like $3,000. And I'm thinking, who in the world is sitting on their couch in their pajamas with $3,000 to buy a lamp? <laughs> Some people. <laughs> I'd like to find those people. I'm, that's the market I'm looking to tap into. So, you know, I have a lot of learning to do. And I'm, that's, you know, that's why I'm here. Well, it seems like you're an artsy person. You know, uh, some of the things that you talk about on our group are very fascinating because we've talked about shadow banning. We've talked, you know, people ask questions about shadow banning. They talk about uh, low and no views. And, you know, there's there's a lot of different topics out there that, that we talk about and I always see you get on and, and um, just really put a positive spin on everything. And I like your, I like, I like your outlook in life. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I'm talking to myself more than I'm talking to anybody else in the group, because I feel like I, I've really tried to make it so that I'm talking about my own situations or I try to apply it to myself so that really, cause I'm talking to myself because I'm, really the most guilty of my of my own shortcomings and and the things that I say are mostly things that I need to hear. I don't really, I'm more of a, like you say, I'm more of a, a creator builder type. I don't know technology as well as I probably should, but I don't really focus on things that I can't control and aspect to um, my business and my, my work. And because there's already so many other things to worry about that's real that you know, that I'm, you know, I'm going to the store and worrying about how much I'm spending on my costs and I'm dealing with actual customers that are upset. I don't have time to worry about if I've been shadow banned, which I probably maybe if that's a thing I might have been because I'm guilty of selling controversial things that people don't like. I've been reported several times. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I, I don't know. I don't try, try not to worry about it too much because I'm already stressed out enough as it is most of the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. If that makes any sense. It does. It does. So what made you start selling on uh, Facebook Marketplace and do you sell on other marketplaces? Yeah, I'd like to say I sell on other marketplaces. Mostly it's Facebook, though. Facebook has the biggest fan base, I guess you'd say. Like they have the best the best traffic. I post on Craigslist. I post on OfferUp. Uh, OfferUp's terrible. You think Marketplace is bad. OfferUp is worse. Um, That's interesting you say that because one of my brothers thinks offer up is great, but it might just be his area uh, because around here where I live, it's not great. Yeah, I don't prefer it. And yeah, I don't either. I, I don't just either. It. I think Facebook is, you know, I'm not a shill or anything, but it just, it, I have the best success with Facebook, whether it's, you know, local, getting to meet people, getting my face out there, like I can't stand out on my in my driveway and see as many people during days as I can drive traffic through my Facebook. What kind of advice would you give our group members and the people who are watching this video? As far as like no views, low views, just in discouragement in general, just feeling because because I wake up days sometimes and I just don't feel like doing it. I feel like this sucks. I suck. My my stuff sucks. Nobody wants to buy it, and I do feel really? like it sometimes you know. I think it's totally human, but I, I just looked up before we got in this interview, and I don't know if it's true or anything, but but generally speaking, um, I looked at this in three years for a business to start to become profitable. Mm -hmm. I'm on year one. Um, some places said seven to 10 years to be profitable. Um, they said three years is just trying to find your niche, trying to find your business identities. However long it is, prepared, I think you should be prepared to make mistakes, have disappointments. Success just doesn't happen overnight. It's cliche, but it's true. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. Don't give up, huh? Don't give up. And if it's not profitable, I mean, that's not not necessarily saying if it's not profitable, you got to weigh your pros and cons. If it If you're not making money and you're losing your home because of marketplace, I don't know, then maybe you need to reevaluate. You're in a space where you can keep going. I think you should. Yeah. Agree. Well, I appreciate you talking to us today. Do you have any more uh, words of advice before we let you go? No, no. Just good luck, everybody. Pretty we much. love having you on the group. Thank you very much, Lisa. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.